So a couple weeks ago, a friend of mine gave me his old, now, Ryzen 7 2700X and asked me, hey, I don't need this one anymore. Here's an old CPU. I'm upgrading to a new one. Can you do something with it? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Give it to me. So I wanted to build a new gaming computer based around the Ryzen 7 2700X. I've never had an experience with that particular CPU. The only experience I have with a 2000 series Ryzen is with the Ryzen 5 2600. The one I have inside my HP Pavilion Gaming desktop. I was curious to see how this processor is gonna stack up against that particular one and against some of the new ones I have. I wanted to see how is the gaming performance going to be. I know pr production wise it's going to be pretty good considering it's 8 core 16 threads and it's still pretty competitive these days but gaming wise I was not sure so I wanted to check it out and I started to think uh, I already have some of the things. I have the memory, I have the cooling solution, I have fans, I have storage. The only things I needed to grab is a motherboard, case, and a power supply. So crunched the numbers, looked at what's around, and this is what I got so I can start that build. As a motherboard, I grabbed the ASUS B450F Gaming 2. This is the second revision of the, of the Strix B450 motherboard from ASUS. Uh, I wanted to grab this one because it was only $10 more expensive than the previous uh, version or the version one. And this one looked a little bit better, updated, so I was like, yeah, it's a good choice. Plus, it's a future proof. You can use the newer generation Ryzen's on it, so why not? So grab this one for $140. I also had these three fans RGB from First Player. These ones I got to review from uh, Amazon couple months back but I never had a build or a computer to put them on so now that was a perfect opportunity for me three of them RGB controlled they look nice I was like yep I'm gonna use these for this specific build oh and the fans uh, come with a remote I'm probably not gonna use the remote but uh, it's good to have it I guess and there's another product uh, from Amazon I wanted to review for a while I didn't have a proper build for it. So this is fan frames, addressable RGB, and they actually, ergo, have uh, several different versions of, of this one. Uh, some of them are three pins, some of them are four pins, so five volt or 12 volt RGB, depending on what your motherboard is. Uh, this specific one from ASUS supports both fi five volt and 12 volt, but this specific frame is 12 volt. So I decided to give it a try since I wanted to test it anyway. And the next one I grabbed is this case from Montac Air 900 Mesh. Why did I chose this specific case? Well, because of this, the mesh. Clearly I wanted to build this uh, Ryzen-based machine with a well-done air ventilation. So this specific case provided a lot of that. Uh, we're gonna go into details about this case and the things I really like and the, things, the few things that I don't like, but overall, I have to say it's a very nice case and provides ample amount of airflow uh, and it looks good as well. All these things aside, the only thing that it was missing for me was a graphics card. Unfortunately, the way the market is today, it's impossible to find anything, I mean literally anything, on a retail price, not even GTX 1650s or 1660 Super or 1660 Ti or any of those. But luckily, I have a few 1660 Ti's from before that I rotate around different builds around the house. So I wanted to build it with that one and just test it with the 1660 Ti. And it's gonna give us some um, competitive numbers, obviously compared to my previous builds with the HP Pavilion desktop with the Ryzen 5 2600 and some of the Intel-based ones with the exact same card. So that 1660 Ti is gonna be a good benchmark for us to see how this specific build is going to perform. And the last uh, what I grabbed is a power supply which you guys are going to see in a second. 650 watts, 80 plus gold, plenty of power for this build and even for upgrades in the future if you want to grab a better graphic card whenever they appear, right? But yeah, this is the introduction. Let's go into the details and we're going to talk about the end of the summary. So first thing, I'm going to use this three RGB fans. We have addressable RGB on these with a remote control they are providing 26 cfms maximum each which is not that great but at least three of them so we're gonna have some air coming in up to 30 23 decibels and 25,000 hours of operation being hydraulic or fluid dynamic bearing 
that makes sense because they are going to be uh, vertical and not horizontal so uh, it's, they're not going to last that long but we'll see we have a controller inside and uh, yeah that's first thing I'm going to use the other thing I'm going to use is this CLC this is the Acetec 550LC industrial one not branded to any brand or company purchased this one from eBay for about $15 a couple months back and I was thinking what to use it for but now I'm going to use it for this build because it's going to serve its purpose perfectly with this one. I uh, already have mounted the AMD bracket right here. And I'm reusing the two fans that are coming with the case uh, on push-pull. This one is going to go here and the next one is going to be on the other side. And on top of those, I actually mounted one of those ARGB uh, frames from Ergo. These are the three pin addressable ARGB frames. So this way we're going to give a little bit more blink to those uh, plain white fans from uh, Montec. I think it's going to look pretty good, but when we install it, you guys are going to see how it's going to look. So we have a cable coming from the fan. We have a cable coming from the frame, which we're going to connect in the back. Before we start building it, I want to point out a few things about this case. Uh, you know, mentioned the price is $66, but I personally think this case should have been priced around... 55 to 59 dollars definitely under 60 because around 60 and slightly over that we have plenty of choices from cooler master from fantex other companies that are much more well known but that being said there's a lot of things there are a lot of good things to mention about this case now uh first thing you're gonna see we have the rubber grommets a lot of those more famous companies don't even provide you the rubber grommets anymore at this price range and uh that's a good addition to see from Montec. Uh, the other thing obviously to mention is the three spaces in the front. The distance between the fans and the actual mesh outside is quite significant. We have about an uh, inch and a half distance that will give enough room for those fans to breed and not get completely choked. There is plenty of ventilation as well in the bottom. If I move just, just a little bit, you will see a lot of perforations right here in the bottom where the power supply is. Uh, that way, if you have a third fan down in the bottom here pushing air inside uh, that air will go underneath the shroud where the power supply is and go passively kind of through here as well so more perforations are definitely beneficial uh, my plan is to actually remove this hard drive cage here I'm not going to use it I don't ever use hard drive so I really don't need it so that way it's going to be less restriction for that air to pass through both on top and on the bottom of the shroud on the top side if i move the case a little bit you will see one of the attractions for me was the distance here and the pictures i thought there will be enough distance between the last screws on the motherboard and the top of the all the roof of the case so you can mount a 240 right above the motherboard without being worried about that 240 uh, interacting with your components like memory and stuff like that i think the distance is not enough so here you can only mount a couple of fans and they're not going to be touching anything on the motherboard it's a little it's a little bit offset for 240 maybe it will work but i just don't like the aesthetics of uh, having that 240 overhang over the ram and cover some of the vrm heat sinks of the motherboard and all that stuff so that's not uh, my favorite setup definitely so but in this particular case since we are going to be using a 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler on the back that really doesn't matter we're gonna have that, all that perforation for passively uh, exhausting some of that hot air out. And uh, as mentioned, this fan and the other one that was in the front are gonna be my push-pull uh, fans for that uh, 120 uh, millimeter Acetec all-in-one liquid cooler. Now, a few negatives, obviously, I can mention right here. The first thing is gonna be these uh, IO shield plates in the back are the holes that you gotta break off and discard. Uh, not ideal situation especially for the price you would expect at least to have those perforated cheap ones that you can replace I know from Amazon you can buy uh, just replacement perforated ones for about six seven dollars so it's not that big of a deal but again that's an extra cost to your build so if you're trying to keep things uh, in the budget and in minimal you have to factor that as well if you want to uh, things to look pretty uh, obviously i'm gonna measure where my graphics card is going to be and i'm gonna have to break two of those but consider that if you're having a triple slot graphics card you're gonna have to remove the three and then later if you're upgrade to something that's two you're still gonna have a hole luckily they are providing you two extra ones that you can cover that hole which is fine but again ideally i would love to see all these being perforated mesh and being reusable not these one 
uh, offs right here that have. Right, I'm gonna flip it on the other side and show you a couple other things that uh, I think they, they missed the mark on. The back side, uh, you will see we have SSD mounts, two of them right here on this uh, cage. They're showing on their website that you can mount one more here and two more here. So there's plenty of uh, space and places to put uh, SSD drives if you want to. Personally, I'm going to remove this cage. Luckily, it's removable. There's screws you can remove right here and pull this whole cage out. I don't need this blocking my airflow. I'm not going to put any hard drives. Uh, but what I wanted to point your attention to is, uh, let's see if the camera can see it. Here on the bottom side, where are the power supplies laying? You will see for some odd reason, they didn't bother to put any cushioning here. So there's just a couple raised metal punch through uh, where your power supply is gonna rest. Uh, ideally, I would like to see at least one of those foam uh, pieces right here to not scratch your power supply. Uh, I'm not sure how much money they saved doing this couple of cents i think that's a missed opportunity would have been great to have a little bit of cushioning there speaking of cushioning and pads uh, let me show you the legs you see the legs of this one are those cheaper foam pads that i mentioned uh, right here and these over time if they sit on a surface especially hard surface they're going to collapse and depress completely and you're going to end up touching plastic to surface so rubber would have been better but it is what it is we can't really uh, do anything about it other than that the space between the motherboard tray and the side panel is pretty good it's about an inch so you have plenty of space to hide all your cables and uh, you will see that they even included these uh, hook and loop straps for better cable management you have three of them plenty of tie points all around which a lot of more expensive cases i've seen and i have don't have as many unfortunately but they montec actually included a lot of those uh, cable tie points which is absolutely great to see but we're gonna see how it's gonna look once we start building overall i think if the price was uh, around 59 dollars i paid again 66 plus tax if it was 59 dollars this case would have been a lot better just because there's a lot of competition around that same price any other person will probably buy the fantex uh, p360a which is the same price with uh, a lot better options so two rgb fans included and obviously the fantex name here we have uh, a lot of good things but also some compromises uh, one more thing to mention almost forgot if you have the cage mountain for the hard drive you see the magnetic filter on the bottom bulges where the screws are so uh, that will leave a little bit of a gap where the screw and the filter is uh, that's why additionally when i remove the schedule it will be a lot better because that filter is going to lay flush on the bottom it's going to prevent all the dust coming in uh, great perforations throughout the whole bottom of the case excellent to see and the magnetic filter helps as well not only it's slotted but has magnets uh, on it as well because it's big and it's gonna uh, stay in place pretty good so there are a few things to point out immediately with the montec air 900 mesh obviously the mesh uh, front uh, i'm gonna get you closer you can see but even on the side you will see that we have perforations so a lot of mesh a lot of uh, great things about ventilation obviously i pointed out the rubber grommets great to have a lot of much more expensive cases don't even include them anymore great perforations right on top of the shrouds great cutouts here for all your cables to come to the motherboard big cutout on the back for have access to the back of the motherboard a big cutouts on the top to route all your cables overall great ventilation uh, for this case uh, and if i move it this way a little bit so you can see the front all that front is mesh for some reason they also included another magnetic filter which is supposed to go between the mesh and the fans no need for that guys if you if you put this between the fans and this mesh they're going to be completely choked out especially this mesh is going to sit right against the fans they're not going to be getting enough air uh, at all so this mesh i just take out completely check it somewhere i definitely don't want to use it and i'm not going to use it for uh, this specific build on the top we have two usb3 dedicated led change button great to see that so many cases make you replace your reset button to make it led change button um, you've seen my cooler master recently the one that i use for uh, transferring my omen 30l parts that's exactly what i needed to do so I'm losing my reset button. Luckily on, on the Omen 30L, it was not a big deal since uh, it's an OEM motherboard and doesn't really have a reset button. 
switch capabilities so that was fine but normally if you have a motherboard you want to have the reset button and the power button as well here we have separate led button great to see power button next to the reset button and we have headphones and microphone 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks separate great to see as well and at the end another two usb 2.0 ports so overall great port selection two usb 3s two usb 2s 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks excellent excellent things and on the top perforated mesh with magnetic cover but if you put anything on top because of the distance between the mesh and the magnetic cover it's so little it's not indented enough the screws will actually stick out through the mesh especially in the front side because it's right where the magnetic strip is this front side and it's gonna lift up the mesh so if you're putting anything on the top make sure to remove that cover as well otherwise it's not gonna look uh, very clean and nice i personally am not gonna put anything on this specific case on the top so it really doesn't bother me that much and the magnetic uh, dust filter will stay on top we have a thumb screw lock for the uh, graphics cards so unscrew this slide it over install your graphics card and slide it back on seven slots we have and perforation on top for 1200 millimeter fan i'm going to be using the acetec 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler so yeah let's go ahead and start the build and as always first i'm going to do some things some preparations outside the case before i actually put them in now to create the desired push-pull effect with this ace attack uh, 550 lc we're going to uh, use both fans one is already mounted with the rgb fan frame and the other one we're going to put on the back obviously when we mount it on the case it's going to look like this push pull obviously one of them is going to be pushing the other one is going to be pulling uh, cables make sure to be pointing towards the motherboard that way it's going to be cleaner to just get them all route them through the hole and they're not going to be visible for a best uh, possible clean look for mounting this we're going to use these longer screws that are normally provided uh, with your all-in-one liquid cooler you're going to go through here and go into the radiator like this so let me just tie it up for a little bit so you can see how it's going to look obviously we don't want to mount another frame on the other side since we only care about the rgb being shown on the inside but this is how it's going to look hopefully we're going to get some good temps since we're not going to be doing a lot of overclocking and this ryzen 7 2700x is going to be on default pretty much the whole time uh, so when we mount it on the motherboard it's going to be like this to install your cpu all you need to do is just lift up the arm on the cpu socket and place it you got to pay attention with this gold corner <laughs> right here is on the uh, cpu place it towards the triangle on the socket make sure to not slam it down gently place it wiggle it a little bit, a little bit on in place make sure everything is situated correctly and just lower down the arm of the socket that's pretty much it and with this specific uh, all-in-one liquid cooler we are actually going to be reusing the back plate of this motherboard this is the, in the installation guides for this specific one so we're only going to be removing the front two plastic brackets Now after we remove those, uh, probably is the best to place them in the box of the motherboard. That way you know where they are in future. If you need to um, maybe sell the motherboard or install a different cooler, this way you're not going to lose them. Keep the screws and the plastic uh, brackets. Now with this specific all-in-one liquid cooler, we have AMD standoffs. They screw directly into the back plate of the motherboard. So we're going to just screw those in, tighten them up in by hand don't over tighten them don't use any tools no wrenches nothing like that just by hand is fine and this is it we have all four of them now at this point we're just going to apply our thermal paste and then we're going to place our all-in-one liquid cooler pump right on top of it which is going to sit like this and then we're going to screw it on top with the other uh, metal pieces they come with it like so and then after that we're going to be good to go we're going to install our memory we're going to install our nvme drive and all that we can place inside the case that's how I, how I normally do it it's a lot easier to work outside of the case than trying to fiddle with everything inside the case so try to install everything possible while everything is outside for memory i'm going to be using kingston 
HyperX Fury. This is one of those unfortunate kits that I bought thinking that I'm going to be able to use it on my Omen 30L, but uh, nope, they are the exact same specs, they're just not approved by HP, approved by HP, so uh, we're going to be using this, this kit 2x8 right here. As a storage, I'm going to be using one of those Crucial P2s, uh, I love these 500 gigabytes, very competitively priced, or under 50 or around $50. So now let's put some uh, thermal paste and we'll style the pump. For thermal paste, I'm using my trusty GD900 Giant's wrench. I've been using this for a long, long time. It's probably gonna last me even longer. Great performance from this one. What I normally do is I use just a little bit in the center and then I spread it around with the spatula. That way I'm sure that it's gonna be even every corner of the CPU. And again, it's a lot easier to work this way when you are not having anything around like the computer case to mess you up. Once it's spread equally, we can proceed with installing our pump. And actually I'm gonna twist the board in 90 degrees this way. So it'll be easier for me to see and work with it. Place it on this side, just like we want it. And gently drop it on top. Line up all the screw holes, hold it in one place, and then place the thumb screws in a crossed manner. So if I put one here, I'm gonna put the next one on the back side, right across from it, diagonally. That way the pressure is distributed equally and our thermal paste is spread equally as well. So easy as that, just five to 10 minutes work of preparation, you'll be able to install your CPU all-in-one liquid cooler. Okay, so tighten them up by hand again. Don't use any screwdrivers. There's no need. You can apply plenty of force by hand only. And a lot of you are probably gonna ask, well, why don't you place the tubes on the bottom of the radiator? Aesthetically, I think that looks a lot better and cleaner when the tubes are out of the way and you can see the whole motherboard instead of dangling over the graphics card. It really doesn't matter. The pump is below the radiator when you mount it. So there's not gonna be any air trapped inside here. To damage it, make sure to tighten up all the screws by hand. Once they're tight, now we can plug into our pump. And this specific motherboard from ASUS has a dedicated uh, pump header right here. Terrible placement, by the way, ASUS. I really don't like that. Let me twist it back where it belongs. I really don't like that. Ideally, I would like to use these here because when you route this cable up to the top, see how much shorter it is and invisible basically. You can tuck the cable behind the motherboard and only uh, the header will stick out. If you wanna use that header, this is how it's gonna look. You see, it? it's not pretty. This cable is all over the place. So I'm just gonna use one of those on the top and boost them up to 100%. That way this cable is gonna be out of my way. So I'm just gonna plug it into this one on the bottom since I'm gonna be using the top one for the fans. And that way if I tuck it behind the motherboard, this cable is not gonna be visible at all. And we're just gonna have everything right here. Next thing, we're gonna put the memory, the second and the fourth slot. So I'm gonna put them right here. That way they're gonna be a little bit away from the pump. Not that it really matters, but just aesthetically. There you go. If we need to move them forward, because our cable might be here intrusive for this uh, 24 pin, we'll figure it out for now, it's fine. And then going to the NVMe drive. So when I started installing the NVMe drive, I actually wanted to try one of these. This is uh, an NVMe drive heatsink. It's not too big. Uh, the fins are not too tall, so I'm not sure how effective it's gonna be. Uh, it comes with a thermal pad, so I just wanted to give it a try and see if if that's gonna work out at all. Uh, these come from Amazon. I bought a couple of those. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description if anybody wants to try them. They come with the uh, thermal pads. They come with these rubber uh, straps that go around and hold the heat sink on top of the thermal pad. I'm not sure if it's needed because it sticks pretty good, but anyway, I'm gonna use it uh, just like this. And I'm gonna use the top slot right here. Uh, that way, being black, it's gonna match kind of the color of the motherboard. It's not gonna be, you know, having that colorful sticker from Crucial on top of it. And hopefully it's gonna lower the temperatures a little bit, even by a couple degrees, it's still gonna be beneficial. But yeah, after I put this on, I'm gonna screw it in the back, and then we're gonna go ahead and get this whole uh, motherboard installed inside the case. 
Now there are a few things to mention before we move on to installing the motherboard uh, with the AIO and everything else. You will notice right away I removed the cage like I mentioned. I really don't need that hard drive cage there. I completely removed it. It gives me a lot more airflow right here. A lot, of, a lot of perforations on the bottom. A lot of perforations right here. And the bottom fan that I installed. I'm going to rotate it around and show you. It's going to blow air in the bottom and on the top as well. All right, so I went ahead and installed the three fans. They're pushing air inside. That's the first player RGB fans. They're coming with their own controller, which is also magnetic. Kind of nice. You can stick it anywhere in the backside without having to glue it. Uh, that's a great touch. And they have their own remote control if you want to change the colors. Now the way to, I chose to install these fans is the ins inside of the case, not outside of, because it's going to give me a little bit more space between the, the fans and the mesh. That way they're going to breathe uh, freely and they're not going to be too choked. So when I put back in the mesh, you can see them through the mesh. At the same time, they have enough space, about inch and a half between the mesh and the actual fans. So they're gonna have a lot of air they're gonna be able to suck in and push through the case. And then the last step for me before putting the motherboard is installing the power supply. And this is what I'm gonna be using for this one. This is the Deepcool DQ650M V2L. Long name, but I wanted to grab a power supply that it's fairly good and cheap at the same time. I know it's kind of hard uh, to fit into this uh, two criterias cheap and good but Deepcool just came out late last year with these series they're 80 plus gold 10 year warranty that's another thing that attracted me and the power supply is actually designed and built by uh, CWT channel well power supply maker that makes a ton of power supplies for variety of big companies including Corsair and other companies that uh, just order their own designs and their own power supplies to uh, CWT it's newer design is DC to DC 650 watts fully modular all kinds of protection active PFC and it's 54 amps single rail the price I paid for this one is around 70 or just a little bit under $70. Now that I have the power supply installed at the bottom of the case, you can actually see the label, that's kind of cool. I like this cutout. It matches almost perfectly the label of the power supply. I can proceed to install the motherboard and uh, we'll put a graphics card, I guess, and see if we can start it up, right? So when we are installing the motherboard, we want to make sure that it's aligned with the holes of the motherboard standoffs on the bottom. What ideally I'd like to do is put the two in the middle right here and I'm gonna finish the rest of them. Uh, but I wanna make sure that everything is lining up correctly. The IO shield uh, in the back is lined up correctly. Just wanna make sure that uh, I don't have to do any adjustments afterwards. And then from here, I'm gonna put the one on the back that it's hard to actually reach out when you put the AIO in. This is the one right on the top. Once I have this one on, I'm gonna make sure that I have enough clearance to put the CPU extra power cable. AIO is installed now. It was a little bit challenging to get these first screws in, but uh, that's the nature of the beast because you gotta support with one hand and the other one we gotta match the hole. Tubes are well done. We're gonna do some cable managing and plug the rest of the cables and then we're gonna fire it up. All right, it's finally built. You guys see the whole process. Again, very lengthy video for me, but this is how I do it. I like to go in a lot of details and a lot of people I'm sure will have questions. So if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and ask me. I'll provide as much as I can. You saw the components I use at the moment. I'm just gonna test everything stock, but maybe in the future, I will actually overclock a little bit and see what kind of bump we can get. Uh, overclocking these CPUs. Here is the build. Finally, we have a push-pull uh, configuration with the 120 millimeter AIO from uh, Asetek, my 1660 Ti, which now goes for like $400. Go figure, right? Uh, when I bought it under 200. My 650 watt uh, 80 plus platinum power supply from Deepcool. If you can spot over there, we have the NVMe drive from Crucial with my mounted on top heat spreader all black again blends well with the motherboard maybe I should turn it on and so you can guys see it right so here it is and it's uh, RGB glory we have the three fans RGB in the front doing their thing and this is the default mode actually uh, but 
with uh, the remote control you can change the modes if you want to or you can use uh, asus aura to change and synchronize or you can use the button on the front of the case and press and change the different modes so you have different options with these and let me get closer you will hear or maybe not hear how quiet these are i'm impressed how quiet these fans are they're doing a great job they're pushing a lot of air on the back i can feel it and there's plenty of distance between the front mesh of the case and the fans about inch and a half maybe two inches uh, that way they're not suffocated and they're completely pushing the air in i have my unfortunate hyperx fury memory why is it unfortunate? Because this one I bought to put on the HP Omen 30L in the summer when they came out thinking that I will be able to use that, but I didn't. So I didn't return it, but now it's used right here. 3200 MHz DDR4 HyperX Fury, 16 gigabytes. Perfect for this build. We have our 1660 Ti and at the back we have, actually it looks great in my opinion, but let me see if I can rotate it a little bit and show it to you guys. So we have the RGB frames that look great. The fan, these stock fans being white, they get lit up pretty well with this RGB frame. And the RGB frame is connected to the motherboard into the 12 volt addressable RGB. So again, can be synced with the motherboard with Aura and uh, synchronize everything together. At the moment, I haven't done it yet. I just wanted to showcase how the light but uh, I'm gonna synchronize them obviously. So yeah, overall, I think it looks great. Hopefully in the future I can get 3060, 3060 Ti, I think that will be a perfect card for this specific build. Uh, it will be paired very good with the processor. I'm gonna have a separate video on this one. We're gonna run some games and see what kind of uh, frames we're gonna get and how it compares to uh, my other builds. Obviously, uh, the most of all, the Ryzen 5 2600 based HP Pavilion gaming desktop. So yeah, I think it looks great for the budget we had. Motherboard 140 case $66 I think this case can be a little bit cheaper around 60 or a little bit lower would have been a perfect buy but anyway that comes to 200 and the power supply is $70 so $270 the rest of the components like I mentioned I already have but if you don't have them you got to consider spending all that money so for me it was kind of a budget build but uh, you know if somebody goes from scratch and tries to build that it's definitely going to be uh, the prices are going to jump up considering the current shortages uh, the 2700x goes for around $300 which is crazy amount of money uh, for two generations older processor then you have to consider $100 for memory you got to consider about $50 for cooling um, you got to consider maybe oh for the fans you got to spend another $30 for $40 for the fans uh, graphics card even worse you know even if you want to get 1660 ti that's going to be you know 350 400 dollars so you gotta remember to to account that into the price so definitely it's going to be a lot more expensive uh than you know what i spent uh for, for me budget for most people probably not so much uh, i'm gonna rotate the case around so you can see the backside. Um, I didn't do the best possible job for the cable management, but because of the side panel is not clear, so nobody's going to see it. Uh, everything is going to be hidden, so I really don't care that much. But it's still not as bad as, as I've seen before. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, let me flip it around. I'll show you uh, some of the things that I did, and uh, we're going to wrap it up. All right, now we have the back side of the case. You'll see I haven't done the best possible job in cable management, but I think it's fine especially when you put uh, the right side panel on, nobody's gonna see it, right? It's not transparent, so it's not that big of a deal. Most importantly, I'm keeping this area clear where the backside of the CPU is. Do not block any excessive heat or create more heat. Somewhat finely managed cables here with these hook and loop straps from the case, tuck these in the back, all the fans and the CPU extension cable. The fan hub from First player is right here because it's magnetic it's convenient you can place it anywhere on the metal surface of the case and i think right here in the front is the best because if i put it right here it's going to obstruct the space where I'm potentially going to put some sata 3 drives which i'm definitely going to do as you guys know me i'm using the nvme drive just for clean windows install and then all my game installs will be on the secondary drive which is sata 3 going to go right here but that's going to be for the next video when i'm going to do gaming tests so we're going to place it there the rest of it you can see the power supply on the bottom 
Uh, cables all fine, plenty of space in the back by the way, even if you have a thicker cables from power supply, it's going to be able to fit nicely and with now no bulging on the side panel. Um, it looks fine, even in the front, without the case working, you can kind of peek and see the fans. Looks nice even without them working. It's another minor thing I wanted to mention about this case that I really like. They actually provide you some extra of these rubber isolators where the glass side panel lays on top and it's getting uh, bolted to. This is actually the first company I see provide that. You know, Montec, good job uh, giving us some extra those because over time, uh, especially if you take it in and out constantly, these are gonna break or deteriorate rubber ages, obviously. And uh, if they break, you're, you're gonna be out of luck. So having some extra is definitely beneficial. But overall, I think uh, it looks pretty nice. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, would you build a computer like that with uh, Ryzen 7 2700X? Um, obviously, if you have it for free like me, yeah, sure, absolutely. But if you have to buy it, $300, I think there's better alternatives. Uh, for 200, you can get the Ryzen 5 3600, which is newer generation, arguably faster and better in gaming and some other tasks. So $100 you can save if you can put it against a new motherboard, a new case. Uh, so don't go and grab this if you don't have it already. I mean, it's not a reasonable purchase for me. Again, it was free, so yeah, I, I wanted to do it, why not, right? I wanted to see how it's gonna do it. Now we're, with gaming, we're gonna see in the next video how it stacks up against some of my other builds and some of my other computers. But uh, yeah, that's for the next time. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you're new, and as always, guys, you have a wonderful day.